Today we're gonna walk you through the Lethal Garage C7 Corvette Flex Fuel Kit install. Let's get right to it. What's going on guys, Medivit here with Lethal Garage and today we have a C7 Corvette. We got LJ helping as well. And uh, a Lethal Garage C7 Flex Fuel Kit. Very straightforward, very easy. Today we're gonna walk you through how to install your Flex Fuel Kit, how we route the cables, where we tuck the sensor, and just how it all works. But let's get right into the kit and what you should get when you get it. So here I have a kit. First and foremost, you're gonna get a sheet that highlights all the details saying, thanks for purchasing the kit. And seriously, thanks for purchasing the kit. But in this instance, you can install this product without a tune. So you can install a product, get it all in place, pin out the ECU, good to go. You cannot run E85 until you have the tune. Now, also keep in mind, if you pin your ECU, you'll most likely get a check engine light, which is, which is not gonna hurt anything. And then once you get it tuned, that'll all go away because basically your ECU is going, hey, there's something plugged into me and I have no idea what it is. So keep that in mind. But in the kit, you're gonna get a fuel line. You will get a fuel line disconnect tool, a sensor, and the custom harness. Now, as far as tool-wise go, we'll go over that here with LJ in a second, but the kit is very straightforward. You'll need this fuel line disconnect to disconnect your fuel line on the rail, and uh, that's about it. So, and this is included in the kit for free at no cost, so that's one benefit to our kit over the others on the market, and you can get free shipping on your kit if you order at lethalgarage.com. So apologies, we're outside. The Lethal Classic has taken up the room in the garage, but in this instance, we need access to this cover be removed, the plastic shroud over your coil packs and your valve cover. We will be accessing the passenger side for the EVAP plug-in and then your ECU is actually in the wheel well on the passenger side. And we'll get to that here later in the video. But as far as it goes, we're gonna go ahead and remove the cover here, this cover here and disconnect this fuel line. So as you saw, we removed the PCV hose. We had to use a T27 uh, bit to remove the two bolts holding on the cover for the coils on the valve cover. And yeah, it was pretty straightforward. Now I should highlight, this is really smart to do when the car is cool. If you have time to let the car cool off, do that. You can see LJ unplugged one of the coils just to be able to get the tool in there. You slide that over the line coming up and just push it in and I'll show you the fuel line on why that pushes in. So if you look on the inside of there, there's four little metal clamps. It's kind of hard to see, but that depresses all those, so it literally just comes right out. So now that we have the fuel line disconnected, what we're gonna do is kind of loop it around the backside so you can kind of see there's an opening in the cubby right there. You see LJ here, he's gonna push the line behind and loop it around. You wanna, you wanna make sure you, you route this properly so you don't kink the line, but if you look in there, you can see how it goes nice and down. The line's not kink, it's wide open. And we'll be able to plug the sensor in on that side. You can see just like that. Now we can plug in the harness. And then everything will get tucked back behind the engine here. And if you want to, you can grab a zip tie or two and zip tie them to the back of the main wiring harness just to make sure it doesn't flop around or move around. But it's not really required. Yeah. And then you just gotta kind of worry about, well not really worry about, but just keep in mind that the brake booster uh, plastic line back there is there as well. Um, so you just gotta make sure to get it back behind the actual brake booster plastic line back there. So it gives it nice room to, you know, sit back there and not interfere with anything. Perfect. Now we'll get the other the provided fuel line on. So what we're gonna do is take the 90 end. The 90 end is actually gonna connect onto the fuel line or the actual fuel rail side. And then this uh, about 45 degree side is gonna actually be the one connecting to the actual sensor down here. But we'll leave this one disconnected for now. That way it gives you more room to put the cover back on. So we'll connect the 45 to the flex fuel sensor like so. Tuck it back there, nice. See, there's tons of room back there with it all connected properly. And then you will then take the plastic cover, connect your coil pack back, of course. And then you will lay this on there like 
so and then when you're all done with this you will then connect that 90 end to the fuel line or fuel rail and it looks just like stock now the biggest thing with our kit and install is it does use all the factory parts it's a factory gm fuel line factory gm sensor all factory connections on the wiring harness so once you install this no one's ever going to know you have an e85 kit on your car and it's using the evap to power it so you don't have to worry about plugging in and drawing power from a critical component on your vehicle and uh, it's just really straightforward so we're going to button this side back up and now we're going to plug in the evap and get to the ecu so now on the passenger side, you can see we have our wires hanging off. You literally just gotta pull the cover off and we're gonna lay the EVAP line. Now you're gonna have just enough cable to reach and plug it in and get it there. Now keep in mind, you're gonna unplug the factory line from the EVAP. Could be a little, can be a little tough to get to. Oh, there we go. Woo. So with that unplug, you then simply just connect this into the flex fuel kit side and then this guy will then connect get in there get my hand in the way to the evap solid and don't forget to lock that safety clip back into position so now you'll have your ground and it's really important that you get this grounded properly but what we'll do is we'll undo this one bolt on the valve cover right here it's a 10 millimeter we'll loosen that up put this around the bolt, I would suggest routing it around the wire so it looks nice and clean, and then tighten it back up. So now that we have the EVAP line ran, we can go ahead and put the cover back on. And now we get to play with the ECU wire. So now that we are ready to get into the fender, we remove the wheel just to make this easier. If you're a professional mechanic, you know you can just turn the wheel and make it work. But in this instance, I wanna make sure everyone knows the easiest way to do it. And for the most part, you'll need a T15, you can use a driver you can use a handheld one you can do whatever you want um, I have a panel remove or a pop rivet remover uh, you can use a flathead screwdriver if you don't have one of those 10 millimeter 7 millimeter socket if you have a swivel extra bonus and some extensions first there's a single 7 millimeter bolt underneath the plastic uh, side panel right here just remove that and then this guy literally just pops out And then you'll see the three T15s hidden behind this plastic panel here. Take this guy, make sure it's in reverse. Remove those, and then we're gonna remove an assortment of uh, push pins in the corner here. So there's one, two, three that I would say need to be removed. If you want to get fancy with it, you can take this fourth one out over here. And then there's three additional uh, seven millimeter bolts that line this plastic piece here. Cause for whatever reason, even if you pull the T15s from here, this uh, like fabric material is still like glued to the actual plastic panel underneath. Um, so I remove this as well. So it's again, three, seven millimeters. And then there's a single 10 millimeter, a little bit further back, you'll see it. They're all kind of in close proximity to each other. So once you are done removing those items, um, you can pull this back and it will give you a lot more access to get your hand up in that fender. I was wrong, there's actually two uh, 10 millimeters down there that hole is on, not just one, so keep that in mind. Um, but once you have the push pins, the T15s, and the 7 millimeters out, this is easily uh, accessible. Just tuck it out of the way, and then the ECU, as you can see, is now right there for you to access. So once you have the fabric uh, inner fender liner out of the way, there is going to be an additional seven millimeter bolt that holds the actual uh, fender to the body in here and then deep in there behind the ecu i don't know if you can see it on the camera but there is going to be a 10 millimeter bolt and that is where the extensions and if you have the swivel 10 it does make it a little bit easier but you can get it with the regular 10 as well so once those two items are removed 
you will be able to pull this back to get more clearance to actually get the connectors off of the ECU itself. Voila. Now that you have those final bolts removed, the seven millimeter at the bottom and the 10 uh, from the back over there, you are gonna have to basically take your fender and pull it outwards a little bit. Otherwise, you are not gonna have any room to actually take the connectors off of the ECU itself. Once you have the actual connectors disconnected from the ECU, um, you are gonna have to remove all three of them. So the blue is gonna be at the top, the black connector is gonna be in the middle, and then the gray connector down here is gonna be the one on the very bottom. Unfortunately, you do have to get the one at the very top. So removal of the other two is just kind of necessary. So once you have the blue connector in hand, which is gonna be connector one, you are going to be pinning pin 38 for the C7 computers. And then to do that, what we're gonna do is take a nice little uh, pick of some sort or like a flathead screwdriver and you are going to want to just carefully pop this little connector up like so so you have the pins exposed and then you will be removing the retainer off of the back as well which has two little uh, tabs here and here that basically just clip onto the actual base of the connector itself pull those back and it exposes all of the wires in the back here so we are going to be going for pin 38 and just a rule of thumb I mean it's always good to just verify with your manual and check to make sure you're getting the right pin um, but the way I've always done it because I've been doing it for a while here is if you look at the actual little plastic connector itself the top left pin over here is pin 53 and the pin directly underneath it is going to be pin 33 so i always start my uh, counting from pin 33 it's going to be one row down from that top left corner where the pin 53 is designated on the blue connector so you're gonna go 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. So it's gonna be the exposed pin between these two wires here. Yours may vary, so be uh, just double, be sure to double check and count to verify you are getting the correct pin space. And then um, I typically just take a pair of side cutting pliers and I remove the little zip tie that holds this down here just to give it a little bit more flexibility and allows the wires to move a little bit. So again, for me, it's going to be pin 38. Well, pin 38 for everybody, but it's gonna be the one that is in between the two wires uh, here on this connector. So I'm going to flip it over. And then this has a little plug in there so I'm going to take my flat little pick here and press in until I hear that little plastic piece pop out so it's going to be kind of stuck in there it's kind of just chilling in there so make sure to shake it and get that little guy out of there um, sometimes when you push the pin in it can actually get caught on the pin lock so you can get stuck there um, so now we're going to grab the pin and pin it into pin 38. So at this point, you'll see LJ's fishing our ECU wire. You, get, We typically run it against the back edge to try to fish it down into the fender. Um, small fingers, small hands pay dividends at this point, but it will fish down there and have plenty of length to get to the ECU. So you can see LJ's already got it pulled through. He's just routing it, making sure it's tight. Now that we have our ECU wire ran down to the connector, uh, we're just gonna pin it into that number 38 slot that we moved that little plastic retainer out of prior. And then just make sure to put the wire in the correct way 
just look at the other wires and the uh, connector and you can verify which way that wire is supposed to go in there. And then sometimes they require a little bit of finessing to kind of get them in there. Like I said, that little plastic lock did not want to come out earlier. So now it is jamming up my wire here. And there we go. See, this is the little plastic piece that gets kind of stuck in there. So once that's out of the way, you should be good to go. And sometimes you can take your little pick to kind of push it down into that slot there. Alright, so once you have it in and hear the nice little click, sometimes you might not, sometimes you will, just verify that it is seated and looks like it is going the same direction as the rest of the pins there. And then I always just double check and verify the position, so I count 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. So the pin that I have placed in is now in pin 38, and I will take the blue clip snap that back into place and then I will go ahead and grab a zip tie re-zip tie that back up and then you will take the little retainer and snap that back into place and then uh, once this is connected back on everything will obviously install in reverse order the blue connector will go at the top the black connector and then the lonely gray connector down here will be the bottom connector. The ECU is color coded, um, so just verify to double check the colors when you put it back together, and then reinstall the bolts in reverse order from being taken out, and you are all good to go. And then just a pointer for the uh, C7 Z06 guys and anybody that has like some uh, side skirts and everything on their car, it will make the install a little bit more difficult. You will have to work around your side skirts. Um, so if they are like riveted into this uh, fender panel here, you will have to remove your rivets. And then um, you should be able to just pull the uh, side skirt down a little bit and then still be able to pull it out far enough to gain access. I would just recommend um, either blue taping or covering the side skirt just in case you uh, pull a little too hard or something so you don't damage your side skirts. But other than that, it's exactly the same uh, installation. So now at this point, if you install it yourself, you can take it to your tuner, go get her tuned, and then fill her up on E85. Not before, after it's tuned. Not before, after it's tuned. Also, make sure your tuner, if you installed it yourself, make sure your tuner verifies the sensor's reading and everything's good. Number one, troubleshooting issues. Sometimes it's not grounded. Make sure it's grounded properly or you pinned it out wrong. Those are two of the number one issues you may see. There you have it. Lethal Garage Flex Fuel Kit installed on this beautiful C7 Corvette. If you guys are interested in this kit or want more information, check it out at lethalgarage.com. Information is down below in the description. Thanks for checking out the video. And until next time, we'll see you on the road.